Okay, good evening. It is 7.30 on Tuesday, October 25th, and I would like to call the regular council meeting of the City of Twinsburg to order. Shannon, call the roll, please. Mr. Scafidi? Here. Mr. Ceresi? Here. Mrs. Stauffer? Here. Mr. Roden? Here. Ms. McBaron? Here. Mr. Fury? Here. Mr. Steele? Here. Okay, next we will have the invocation and the pledge. Uh, the invocation will be uh, led by Mr. Ceresi. Please rise. Father, we seek your guidance for the business that is before us. In planning for the future of the city of Twinsburg, give us vision. Guide us to make decisions that are not self-serving, but for the betterment of our community, so we can continue to move in a positive direction. Amen. 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 And now we have the pleasure of having Troop 223 here with us tonight, and that troop is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Scout Head. Scout Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Troop 223. And welcome to our meeting. Uh, next, we have the approval of the uh, October 11th, 2016 uh, meeting. Does any, anybody have any corrections or changes? Hearing none, then the uh, mittens, <laughs> the mittens, <laughs> the mittens <laughs> will stand uh, approved as written. I know it's been cold the last <laughs> Yeah, I know. I've seen it. Yeah, it's and the meeting. <laughs> okay, next we have audience participation. Do we have anybody? There is none. There is none. Okay, so we'll move right along. Okay, awards and presentations. Mayor? Thanks. Well, good evening, everyone. We are here on a very important night. We have a uh, Eagle Scout getting a proclamation. Um, and, uh, and after we're done with this, you are all welcome to leave and go watch the Indians game. <laughs> so we will be rushing through the rest of our meeting. But anyway, I'd like to call up um, Simon Dale. Hi, Simon. All right, so I'm going to read this proclamation. So, whereas the administration, council, and residents of the city of Twinsburg, Ohio, extend congratulations to Simon Gavin Dale for his achievement in earning the rank of Eagle Scout. And whereas Simon Dale joined Scouts in 2006 with Cub Scout Pack 677, sponsored by St. Cosmos and Damien Church in Twinsburg, Ohio, he earned the Arrow of Light Award in 2011 and then crossed over to the to Boy Scouts in Troop 223, sponsored by the First Congregational Church of Twinsburg, Ohio, under Scoutmaster Peter Dale. Whereas Simon Dale has held the positions of patrol leader, den chief, and has served two terms as senior patrol leader. He has earned a total of 48 merit badges, 21 of which are needed for Eagle Scout. He has earned the National Outdoor Achievement Award for Camping and Hiking, the World Conservation Award, and the 50 Mile Award. Simon has participated in many activities, including over 50 camping activities for a total of 152 nights of camping, and he hiked 258 miles as part of troop activities. Whereas for his Eagle Scout service project, Simon created a brand new play area at his church, St. Timothy's Episcopal Church of Macedonia. With the help of family, friends, and fellow scouts, he coordinated and supervised the construction, which included a large mulch covered area and the building and renovation of a large play set two picnic tables, and two benches. Whereas Simon is a junior at Twinsburg High School, he performs in the marching band and concert bands on the saxophone and tuba, and jazz bands on tenor saxophone. This year he was chosen to lead the Tiger Marching Band on the field as a drum major. He has been part of the varsity bowling team for two years and plans to continue that this winter. This will be Simon's second year as a Twinsburg High School uh, news anchor and editor. He spends his free time helping run after-school clubs and events at the Twinsburg Public Library. He's a member of the St. Timothy Episcopal Church of Macedonia um, since 2010. Uh, now, therefore, I, Ted Yates, Mayor of the City of Twinsburg, express my congratulations to Simon Gavin Dell on achieving this prestigious and honorable rank of Eagle Scout. I further congratulate his parents, Peter and Edie Dell, brother Ethan, and sister April, along with family, friends, and fellow scouts as they gather to commemorate the special occasion. Congratulations. Thank you. 
So I just want to say it's, it's been an, an honor this past year. Um, this particular troop and, and the, the scouts that we have in, in Twinsburg, um, we've done a lot of these proclamations. So I just want to thank all, all the boys involved and all the leaders that help um, do what you do for this community and, and especially the projects that these scouts do around town and, and for their churches and for, for their families and for all the, the, the projects and things we have going on here in Twinsburg. So thank you very much. Okay, this is it. You're welcome to stay <laughs> yeah. if you'd like to go. We understand. Have a good evening. Thank you. Okay, next we have uh, Larry Finch, and he's going to come up and uh, talk about the uh, ballot issues. Hi, Larry. Good evening. I'll make this uh, relatively to the point and brief, I hope. Um, I'm here to, to just provide a summary of issue 24 and 25. Um, these issues um, basically should be taken uh, together because they impact uh, a quantity of land at the northeast corner of Glenwood and Darrow Road. Um, that is currently owned by the city. <coughs> uh, the city of Twinsburg owns and maintains over 1,900 acres of parks and open space in the community. Uh, some of the land we own is uh, designated for public purposes. Others we have yet to determine use for. Um, the land affected by issues 24 and 25 are lands we have yet to determine a specific use for, uh, but it has been recommended uh, by Planning Commission and Council has considered it and also uh, agreed with the recommendation that the land uh, should be rezoned to R5 residential. Um, and uh, there are a number of reasons why Planning Commission and I think also Council, I won't talk on behalf of Council, but I know for the administration and Planning Commission there are a number of reasons why <clears throat> this seemed to be an appropriate use for the property. First of all, the recommended R5 zoning district is the single family residential district that contributes the least number of children to the school system based on studies we've performed in the past. Um, it's the land use type that's most compatible with the surrounding uses, including the condominium units, units at the north and um, residential to the south or to the east and uh, other uses uh, surrounding it. <coughs> um, an additional consideration was the location of supported commercial uses located conveniently across Glenwood Road. Um, the property um, is accessed to the anticipated needs of the city, basically, uh, and um, the prop it's currently tax exempt, generating no property tax revenues or other revenue to the school district, the vocational school, the library, or the city. Property is not well suited for uses other than public purpose, uh, other than public uses or residential uses. Uh, it was originally acquired primarily for the purpose of limiting commercial development in the northeast uh, portion of the community. Um, <clears throat> If the area were to be developed as recommended by uh, this R5 district uh, classification, the maximum number of homes that could be developed on the site would be about 65 to 70 units depending upon the road unit layout and unit layout. If sold for the purpose of this use, the sale would generate probably 1.3 to 1.5 million dollars. No specific use for this revenue has been determined, but it could be used for any variety of city needs including capital expenses, debt service, savings, or operations. If developed, uh, it would allow um, the uh, property to be improved with units and, and structures that would generate more than $16 million in improvement value, excluding the value of the land. <clears throat> the annual property taxes resulting from land and improvement would be in excess of $400,000 annually. Twinsburg schools would benefit from an additional $275,000 in, in, in property tax revenues. Um, after occupancy, the new houses on the property would generate about 35 students to the district uh, based on um, our history of looking at this kind of unit. <coughs> uh, and the district is currently uh, 
experience enrollments that have been and are anticipated to remain flat or only slightly increasing. Now, assuming the household incomes of at least the current average for Twinsburg, new residents would contribute at least $90,000 in annual income taxes to the city. Um, <clears throat> And the uh, total of $4.5 million of annual earnings to, of those households um, would be spent on things local, like purchases at local businesses, like Heinen's, uh, the golf course, area dry cleaners, pizza shops, etc. cetera. <coughs> um, the, the addition of new residential units would have only a neg negligible impact on public service costs, like trash collection, fire, and safety to the smaller number of units added to the property's location, and it already lies within the city's uh, public infrastructure grid. Cluster units have uh, appealed empty nesters, and others no longer want to have the responsibility for lawn maintenance, and um, would be located in a proximity close to entertainment and other uses. Mm -hmm. So all in all, the recommendation uh, has a number of positive aspects associated with it, and um, it w most, uh, one of the most important is the land is currently fallow, generating no revenue and no benefit to the city or the school system as currently zoned. Any questions? No, I guess just a, a comment. I, I think um, you know one of the main things that, uh, that drives me to support this is um, all the responses and things we've got from basically empty nesters. You know, we have a situation in Meadowwood and Ethan's Green where. A lot of people built in there. They raised their kids in there. Their kids are off to college, and there's been numerous requests. Actually, I have a message I have to return to someone that was asking about this, saying, I hope it gets voted through because we live in Ethan's Green, and we want an opportunity to move, um, you know, to have additional options in Twinsburg for, for low-maintenance housing or single-story or whatever um, that uh, we would, you know, guide to put there. And that's... that's Another thing I think to consider is that with the city owning this property, um, hopefully we'll be able to direct more of, uh, of what a vision we would see for an upscale type community that could um, complement the surrounding neighborhoods um, as well as maybe provide an attractive uh, uh, um, complex that would tie into the golf course and some of the proposed renovations we're looking at there. So, um, I mean, that's basically my, my opinion on it. and. You know, there's been some confusion regarding, you know, we need this to pass to be able to do the golf course. Um, financially, those have never connected. Um, there may have been a, a, a councilman or someone in the past that said we could use the money for that, but the two projects were never financially connected. Um, so um, this is just land that's sitting that the city owns that we think could, uh, could be benefited by having um, and I think there's a need. Our largest growing population is 65 and over. We have baby boomers that are now coming up and, and, and wanting to, to downsize a little bit, but one and still an upscale type uh, unit to move into. So I think this is an opportunity to offer that for, for those that want to stay within Twinsburg. And just one final comment. We, we don't have very much residential land remaining, uh, and this is a product type that really is not well represented in the market, and I think, Joanne, you may have um, good knowledge of that. Um, so I think it helps us with our housing opportunities and uh, the variety of the housing options that are available in Twinsburg. <coughs> thank you. Okay, thank you, Larry. Okay, next we'll move on to the uh, Council Communication and Committee Reports. Mr. Fury. Thank you. Last evening, the Planning Commission met on October 24th. Uh, two items were on the uh, agenda. A lot, split, a lot split consolidation for the Shepherd Preserve subdivision, which is at 99, uh, 9499 Shepherd Road in Bridget Lane. And there were three lots that were uh, combined for their, to meet the amount of land they needed for the 28 unit density of the R4 property for uh, uh, Koblitz homes. Uh, that passed 5-0. There was also a revised site plan uh, by Mary Hot Hotels for a proposed, uh, it's not, it's not, a, it's supposed to be a, 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 
uh, excuse me? Residence Inn, right? A Residence Inn, but it's a, a like a week stay as opposed to a, uh, an overnight. Uh, the change in the preliminary plan was that it had been approved at 89 rooms for the, uh, uh, previously by the Planning Commission. They've increased the density to 99 rooms. They've uh, looked at adding additional parking uh, and uh, at that, that also passed 5-0, but will require some uh, variances for the Board of Zoning Appeals to move forward. The mayor was also at that meeting last night. Um, other than that, uh, today is the 10-year anniversary for the passing of Jeff Neubauer. Neubauer. He was a uh, football coach, uh, active in our rec center, and uh, uh, did a lot of work as he was sick with cancer, uh, promoting uh, 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 cancer awareness and, and did a ballpark tour. I don't know if everybody remembers that, but he went to probably 13 or 14 <coughs> ballparks throughout the country in the summer and actually was planning on going to the World Series, but of course was too sick. So on the day the Indians are going to have a home game uh, in, uh, at the World Series is the 10th anniversary of the passing of Jeff. And this last month there was a, uh, a golf outing fundraiser for the, uh, uh, the charity group that's still working in his name called Gen F. So um, I like Jeff. He's a good friend of mine, and I, I miss him. So, and that's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Ceresi. I've had no meetings, no report. Thanks. Okay. Ms. McCarran. Uh, Parks and Rec Committee will, will be meeting tomorrow night at 630. Thursday. Oh, Thursday. Today is only Tuesday. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I have. Is that it? Okay. Under my report, um, Capital Improvement uh, Committee met twice since our last council meeting. <clears throat> Their first meeting, they, um, they received the capital request from the department heads and they went through them. Uh, their second meeting they, um, is typically when they request department heads to come forward at their next meeting to explain some of their requests. And <clears throat> the capital requests <clears throat> were really down to a minimum this year. Um, and a lot of it was just um, extending pay, uh, like uh, leases that we've had going for certain vehicles and so on and so forth in the departments uh, for the most part. And the uh, department heads also gave a really nice description of each request that they were making. So uh, the Capital Improvements Board did not ask any department heads to attend uh, their meeting. However, then they went through and made their recommendations. And they basically, um, and I sat, I was the council rep that represented that, uh, that committee. They uh, basically approved every every request that was on there, um, with the exception of a couple questions that they sent over the finance director, and she did a great job of answering them, and so they were satisfied. Um, the next step is they would come to the council finance committee meeting, which we held tonight, and they make their they lay out the recommendations. Uh, Matt Salur, the chairman of the uh, capital improvements board, came here and uh, explained to, to finance all of the recommendations which were exactly what I just laid out to you. Finance Committee then accepted their recommendations uh, as written by the committee. So um, next it'll go before Council um, that we've recommended it now to Council that uh, all the recommendations be accepted. So those were the two committee meetings that I had. Um, finance, Capital Improvement. And that's it. That's all under my committee report. Thank you very much. Mr. Rowe. I have nothing this evening. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Steele. Uh, the Architectural Review Board met on the 20th. Uh, they approved the sign criteria, two signs and two houses. Um, and I have nothing else to safety and uh, Mr. Scafidi talked about the Finance Committee. Okay. Mrs. Stock. My committees have not met okay. for finance and here reported on it. Okay. So. Uh, Mary Yates, you're next. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'll try to be quick. I know you guys are fast-tracking this for me. Um, so uh, this past weekend, I was able to attend the VFW 70th anniversary celebration. Um, great event. I just want to compliment Joe Jasney, all the work he does with, with our VFW, all the members and, and just, uh, you know, all that they've done throughout the last 70, 70 years in uh, uh, supporting our, supporting our vet veterans and, uh, and those that are serving in the military. Um, I was able to attend a, a chamber luncheon where Mike DeWine spoke. Um, very interesting hearing him speak and some of the issues that we're faced with today. Um, one of them, which I'll probably bring up at a later meeting, 
that's uh, kind of tugging at my heart and wanting to try to get involved and get the city more involved. But uh, the opiate epidemic we have here, uh, uh, that we have here currently going on in the United States. So, um, but it was interesting hearing him talk. Um, it was a, a multiple chamber meeting. Um, some of the road projects and different things going on. Uh, a lot of questions have been asked about Ravenna Road. It will go out to bid um, this November for certain sections of Ravenna Road. So we'll keep everybody updated on that. Um, a lot of questions have been raised regarding the plates and the construction work on our newly paved road on 91 that has occurred basically from the Hudson border down to, uh, down to the square. And that is a gas line replacement. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they're having a co-open section of the road to work on that as they work their way down uh, 91. It's frustrating. Um, I'm frustrated with it, but um, hopefully that's going to get wrapped up here soon. Uh, Ravenna sidewalk is another one. Uh, looks like we're in a position now to move forward with the uh, sidewalk on Ravenna. So as we get more details on the bid and everything, we'll provide uh, information to the residents on that. Uh, from a parks and rec standpoint, um, been getting a lot of questions regarding the work being done at the uh, the cafe at the fitness center. We had Subway in there, if you remember, years ago. Then we had Witch Witch. Um, both are no longer there. The city has decided to open up its own cafe, so we've developed a logo. We're doing some work, and it shall, it'll it be open by November uh, 7th. So the plan is to offer uh, breakfast sandwiches, um, coffee, smoothies, protein shakes, um, wraps. So you know, kind of cater to w really what our members at the fitness center want to see. Um, and so I'm excited about that, and, and uh, that should be open here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, this coming weekend, we have Truck or Treat, which is a huge event up at, uh, uh, at the fitness center. So uh, for families, uh, young or old, uh, come on up and, and experience that. But that will be going on this Sunday. And then lastly, we planned over the last couple of days um, it was actually brought up yesterday, and, and Derek, Derek and I uh, have been working uh, to organize a, a watch party for the World Series game. It will be Saturday night up at the community center uh, behind the pool. We've rented a 60 by 30 tent that will be heated. Um, I want to thank uh, Roger Buell from Summit Sound. He is uh, donating his time and resources to bring in high-depth projectors and a 12-foot by 9-foot screens, two of them, one inside, one outside. Um, but I encourage families to come on up. It will be free, open to, to, to everyone that shows up, and hopefully uh, we'll have a, a great time and, a, and a celebrating a, a win. And that's all I have this evening. Okay, Mayor. Thank you. Doors open for that at 7 p.m. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, department heads, uh, does Karen have a report? <coughs> <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Oh, I'm first. Huh? <laughs> first and last. <laughs> um, for October's collection, we are up. Um, we received one million three hundred twenty-one thousand forty-nine compared to last year's receipts of one million three hundred twenty-one thousand forty-nine. Uh, wrong. That's just repeating what I just said. We uh, have an increase of thirty-five percent at four or four hundred seventy-five. 1458. The total year to date receipts collected for 2016 is 18146705 compared to last year's collection of 16229464. This also reflects an increase of 12% or 1917214136. The refunds for the month of October is $9436 and which is reflected in October's collection. And lastly, the total net change in distribution for individual net profit as well as withholder is 223,082. Also, just to let you know, I'll be re attending the annual CPM, CPIM conference that is required um, in order to receive your credit hours to serve as finance director, and that will be tomorrow. That's all I have to report. Okay. That's all we have this evening for department heads. <laughs> All right, next we'll move on to legislation. Uh, first, we have ordinance number 95, 2016. An ordinance authorizing and directing the appropriate appropriation of certain interests in real property necessary for the improvements to Darrell Road, located between Glenwood Drive and the Solon border. Okay, I'll make a motion that we adopt ordinance 95, 2016. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Ceresi seconds. 
Uh, what this is, this is third reading tonight and allows the law director to proceed with the necessary action to secure two properties in uh, the Meadowood subdivision for the Route 91 widening. Any other discussion? Call the roll. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. Cerisi? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Steele? Yes. Ms. McFerrin? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Rudin? Yes. Okay, or well, Ordinance 95 2016 passes 7 0. We have Ordinance 99 2016. In ordinance amending the current year appropriations for the various general and special revenue accounts as established in Ordinance 6 2016, the appropriation ordinance of the City of Twinsburg for the year 2016. Okay, and that's on second reading then tonight. Ordinance 100 2016. In ordinance amending the current year appropriations for the various general and special revenue accounts as established in Ordinance 6 2016, the appropriation ordinance of the City of Twinsburg for the year 2016. Okay, and that's also its second reading tonight. Ordinance 102, 2016. In ordinance amending the NPDES Phase 2 Stormwater Management Plan for the City of Twinsburg, Ohio, as presently on file with the City Engineer. That will also be its second reading tonight. Ordinance 103, 2016. In ordinance amending the current year appropriations for the various general and special revenue accounts as established in Ordinance 6, 2016, the appropriation ordinance of the City of Twinsburg for the year 2016. Okay, once again, that is its uh, second reading this evening. Finally, we have Ordinance 104, 2016. In ordinance authorizing the sale at auction of certain personal property owned by the City of Twinsburg and no longer needed for, for municipal purposes. Okay, and that's its first reading this evening. And that ends our legislation portion of the meeting. Next, we'll move on to uh, unfinished business, new business, and miscellaneous. Shannon, I'll start with you. Anything? Karen? Karen, anything? No. Further comments? Mm. Go Shannon? tribe, go calves, go tigers. <laughs> Very. Uh, I uh, needed to make a motion that I missed when I was doing my report on the Planning Commission. Okay. In uh, uh, <laughs> per section 18, 1183.09, once there is a, uh, uh, a subdivision approval recommended by the Planning Commission, Council needs to approve a motion accepting that uh, that recommendation. So at this time, I'd like to make a motion <coughs> uh, that City Council approve the preliminary plat for the Sherwood Woods subdivision as recommended by the Twinsburg Planning Commission at their October 10th meeting, 2016, which was voted on unanimously by the Planning Commission. A second. Any, Any discussion? discussion? Call the roll, Chena. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Cerisi? Yes. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Ms. McFerrin? Yes. Mr. Steele? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Thank you. That's all I have this evening. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Cerisi? Nothing here. Thanks. Okay. Ms. McFerrin? Um, I just wanted to touch on what Larry had talked about, about the rezoning and offer if anyone had any questions on from a realtor's point of view to feel free to call me because I totally agree that that would be the optimum use for the land and that I have a lot of people calling and looking for that type of home property. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, under my report, I do need to make a motion. Um, <clears throat> my motion is to accept the, um, the City of Twinsburg property and facilities naming dedication policy and form as presented to us at the last meeting uh, drawn up by our law director. No second. Okay, Mr. Fury seconds. Any discussion, Council? Shannon, call the roll. Mr. Scafidi? <laughs> yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Ceresi? Yes. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mrs. Stafford? Yes. Mrs. Ms. McFerrin? Yes. Mr. Steele? Yes. Okay, thank you. And then one more motion I have is, uh, and that is that the City Council does not oppose to the new liquor permit for STARS Ballroom LLC located on East Aurora Road and authorize the clerk to submit the form to the Ohio Division of Liquor Control. Is there a second? A second. Okay, a second. Any discussion? Everybody I have a question. Yes. So does that take the place of, like, if anything else was going to open mm -hmm. up where, what was, what was it, what was it before? Scorchers. Scorchers. So does that take the liquor license from where Scorchers was and there's not another one? Because what are we doing with that, that property that's open? I'm just curious. With the square property, normally replace one with another, correct? Isn't that it where depends. they're at? That is where they're at, but they're, I'm saying, but they're, they're still there. They're, 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 they're next to it. They're like part of the old scorchers. Scorchers. So I'm just curious if that yeah. takes away then whoever would open something 
in that next building yeah. next to it does that I think the way the liquor permits it's so many per community so if it's there's one that leaves oh, from I always thought it was like one like and leaves and one comes back in the that. whole community so okay well, population okay yeah. and yeah the Just number curious. is based on that yeah and liquor permits are sometimes controlled by individuals so the landlord for that may control the liquor permit um, I, I doubt he did have two right. four that's why I'm, I'm that just wondering because there's yeah. still a big portion but that's available. I haven't heard anything that is potentially coming there so okay I'm just curious yeah. are, they, are they putting a bar in there or yeah, are they, what are they putting in there, there? they need what? a liquor permit, a liquor permit I for believe it's more for food. special events um, I talked to the liquor control board today <coughs> and it's the way they, that it was presented to them was more special events to host like um, when they just get ball, like it's ballroom yeah. dancing so yeah. more like I don't want to say galas but like more event type things not on so a we're not regular as far as you know this is not like every Friday or every night they're going to have liquor in, in I don't think so I know that a lot of places have like wine and stuff with I can oh. get further clarification if yeah, you'd well, like if you can get like an F2 yeah. permit that would just be like a one time event that you can get so many of those I'm just curious it's I just find that weird that they'd ask for a whole permit mm -hmm. Take I think it's on my desk do you know if this has to be mm -hmm. passed tonight we no, could. I think it has to we be could pass it at the next meeting, and it would still be within the 30-day window. Okay. Um, then that being said, I'll withdraw my motion. Okay. No, okay. withdraw my and second. Withdraw your second. <laughs> yes. Sorry. And we'll look Just at curious. it the next meeting if we can get some more information. So you want to know what they're using it for? Yeah. I like Seth's question too. Does that take the permit away from that whole building? Okay. Okay. And finally, um, our next council meeting will be uh, November 8th. That's election night, and uh, caucus will start at 7 o'clock. And that's all I have. Mr. Rowe. I have nothing this evening. Thank you. Mr. Steele. Go Tribe. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Ms. Stuff. Ditto. Okay. <laughs> Mayor? Nothing this, nothing this evening. Nothing this evening? Then that will conclude our council meeting, and I will move that we adjourn. Meeting adjourned. Good night. Don't try. Good night. All right. Well, you haven't missed the first picture.